Hey guys, this week I am going to talk about the murder of Sylvia Likens. If you're interested in seeing a movie of this, I think it was called American Crime Story. Sylvia Likens was 16 when she was killed. This happened in Indianapolis, Indiana in October of 1965. What put Sylvia in this place was that she was one of six kids, I believe it was, that I read. Her parents uh, were carnival workers and they had to travel a lot for financial sake and I guess for the sake of having to move extra kids all over the country. Sylvia and her younger sister Jenny, who had had polio and therefore was sort of disabled, the parents would ask other families to watch them while they were doing certain things because it was easier on them to have two less kids to feed and to take care of. But Sylvia and Jenny became friends with some of the kids in this one family. I believe their last name is pronounced Banaszewski. And their father asked Gertrude Banaszewski, who is the main culprit in this terrible crime, if she would mind keeping Sylvia and Jenny for a short time. And the parents would send them a check for $20 a week, I believe it was, in exchange for her taking care of the two girls. The father checked out Gertrude's home. He did encourage Gertrude to straighten them out if they, if she had any trouble with them. If they, you know, mouth off to you, whoop them, you know, whatever. It was probably sort of that conversation, like you have full reign to punish my children as you see fit, not knowing that this was a crazy person he was leaving his daughters with. Now, Gertrude Banaszewski also had financial troubles. She was a divorcee. She had been in many failed marriages. Most recently, she was left by her husband, but he was much younger than her, and she had had her last child by him. I believe she had six children in all and she was depressed she was probably dealing with some postpartum after this baby and she was also struggling for money so she did like ironing and babysitting and stuff like that to make ends meet so twenty dollars a week to take care of these kids just for basically feeding two extra mouths she's probably going to make some money off she's definitely going to make some money off of that because this is the 60s it worked for her she said that's fine i'll you know i'll keep your girls here that's totally fine with me as long as you send the checks however the first time they sent a check the check was late and Sylvia and Jenny were both whipped by Gertrude because of their parents sending a late check. She punished the girls. When Gertrude began punishing the girls, she quickly honed in a lot of her anger onto Sylvia. I'm not sure if it's because Jenny had polio. I'm not sure if it's sort of what the movie tried to portray it as Sylvia protecting her sister Jenny and saying, you know, what me more, do do more to me, I'll take hers. Very well could have been, and that's very noble of a sister to try and protect her younger sibling like that. She accused Sylvia of stealing candy that Sylvia bought, and then humiliated her, like tried to humiliate her in front of the kids and everything when Sylvia admitted that she had a boyfriend, supposedly. I don't know um, how true that is if she had a boyfriend or if she was just seen talking to a boy at school as it, because as it goes on, you'll see that Gertrude will find any excuse to be mad at Sylvia and to punish her, even completely making up lies that aren't true. Now, at the time that this was happening, Paula was the oldest. She was 17 at the time of the murder and she was pregnant during the time of this. Now, someone being pregnant at 17 in the 1960s, obviously that's scandalous. And Gertrude doesn't know it first, and I don't know how long of a gap there was if Paula tried to hide it from her mother, if she was trying to figure out what to do, and then her mother found out, or if people started hearing rumors at school and it got back to Gertrude. Now, in one of the many punishments that Sylvia suffered through, Paula actually kicked her in her lady bits and accused her of being pregnant. And at that time, Gertrude sort of just let everything fly. She even encouraged her children to punish Sylvia, push her down the stairs, kick her, do anything they wanted for their own entertainment. Now, all of the children except for Paula and Stephanie are 12 or under when this is all going on. So they're very susceptible to do what their mother tells them to do. They're probably afraid of her, so they're going to do whatever they think. And of course, the younger ones are going to think this is normal because this is what they're growing up seeing. Um, Stephanie was 15 at the time of the murder and Paula was 17. The other ones were uh, John who was 12, Mary who was 11, Shirley who was 10, John Jr. who was 8, and Dennis Lee Wright Jr. who was just a few months old at the time. 
they started really going in on Sylvia. I guess it was just a mix of Gertrude's mental illness, her frustration with being poor, her frustration with having so many children, but she really just let the kids go ape shit on Sylvia basically, and she did it too. She sort of led the parade. Supposedly once at a church function, Gertrude force fed a hot dog overloaded with condiments to Sylvia and Sylvia vomited it up because she was so, you know, like forced to eat it and she wasn't ready. And she was later forced to eat what she had thrown up. Gertrude accused Sylvia of prostitution at this point and she would deliver sermons for the family, uh, very misogynistic. You know, she would sort of use it to her advantage or twist certain phrases around to be all about, you know, prostitutes being bad and whores and this and that. And I guess she skipped over the Mary Magdalene passages, but she used it to say that women were filthy in general. Now, there are definitely controversial parts of the Bible that put down women. There are definitely parts that they say, you know, husbands should worship their wives as they are the church to Jesus and, you know, whatever. But Gertrude is really honing in to her kids that we're doing the Lord's work by punishing her. Another thing that Gertrude used for her own argument was that supposedly Sylvia was spreading rumors at school that Stephanie and Paula were prostitutes. I don't think anyone knows the truth, but I think everybody assumes it was not the case. I think some people heard that Paula might have been pregnant and it sort of got around the community and Gertrude used her anger towards Sylvia to say, I bet it was her who spread these rumors. And this supposedly uh, provoked Stephanie's boyfriend who was Coy Hubbard to physically attack Sylvia. So Coy Hubbard and his classmates made frequent visits to uh, Gertrude's home to torment Sylvia. And they would work with Gertrude's children and Gertrude herself in thinking of punishments for her. With Gertrude's encouragement, they routinely beat her, forced her to eat feces and drink urine, used her as a practice dummy in like their own judo sessions. They would burn her body with cigarettes. They did so over a hundred times and they would severely injure her genitals. Um, at one point to entertain some teenagers that came over, Gertrude made Sylvia strip naked in the living room and insert an empty Coca-Cola bottle into herself, if you get what I'm saying. So this was very sick. This was very much for Gertrude's entertainment and all these teenagers' entertainment. There's nothing okay about this. Paula once beat Sylvia so hard that she broke her wrist and it ended up in a cast, which she later used the hard cast to beat Sylvia even more. Gertrude forced Jenny to join in on punishing her sister and beating her. Jenny did not want to do this. Obviously, it's her sister. She cares about her. But Jenny was in great fear of what could happen to her. Gertrude threatened her that if you don't join in on this, you're going to be on Sylvia's side just like she is. And at that point, there's many reasons going through your mind not to. A, she suffered from polio, so she's pretty defenseless as it is. And B, if anyone's going to help Sylvia, it would be her. So if she's being beaten too, to the point that Sylvia is, where she can probably barely move, barely walk, she starts not being able to eat and all that, like they're both screwed. So Jenny really has to stay out of that side of it and do what she can to survive for both of their sake. Now the neighbors next door um, heard a lot of commotion going on. However, they were afraid and they decided to sort of stay out of it. Had they intervened sooner, obviously Sylvia probably would have been saved from her untimely death. However, again, this is the 60s. People didn't just interfere in other families' lives. Uh, as messed up as it sounds, and as much as you might think, well, if I see something like that happening to a kid, or I suspect something like that's happening, of course I'm going to intervene. This was a different time. Sylvia and Jenny were teenagers. They weren't five, you know, they weren't toddlers being tortured. They didn't know she was being tortured. They didn't know the severity of it. They thought she was probably just a rough kid. Gertrude was having a rough, rough time with her and Gertrude was probably punishing her a little too much. But again, in the 60s, people didn't interfere as much with things like that. So they decided it best to stay out of it. They were afraid to get involved and they just sort of let it happen. Not that it was on them to stop it, but again, you know, if you ever suspect something like that is happening, obviously you need to report it. Obviously you need to intervene. Times have changed. Gertrude eventually uh, forbid Sylvia from attending school anymore 
because uh, Sylvia stole a gym uniform. Um, now, the reason she stole the gym uniform was because it was required to wear. However, Gertrude, even with the $20 a week she was getting for watching the girls, she refused to buy a gym suit for Sylvia. So Sylvia kind of didn't have much of an option. I, I think she was afraid to report Gertrude or say, look, the person I'm living with is refusing to buy this. She just tried to do what she could think to do to stay under the radar, do what she was told, and stay out of trouble. Well, after this happened, Sylvia was not allowed to go to school anymore. Sylvia, because of the torture that she endured, um, eventually became incontinent. And that means that she really lost control over her bowel movements, um, her urinary movements and her you know, bowel movements, everything like that sort of started to happen naturally. Because of all the torture she was sustaining down there, her muscles just didn't work the same way anymore. She was also denied access to the bathroom. So it sort of had to happen that way at a certain point for her to just you know, not be in so much pain, having to hold stuff in that you're not allowed to let out. But then because she was denied bathroom access and forced to wet herself, Gertrude got mad at her for wetting herself and threw her down in the basement and locked her in where she would remain up until soon before her death. Now, throughout her captivity, Gertrude, with the assistance of the children and some of their neighborhood friends, would put Sylvia, they would take her up into the bathroom, fill up a scalding hot bath, burning hot bath, and rub salt onto Sylvia's burns. They refused to feed her. She was rarely fed, and she was kept naked almost the entire time. Again, she was made to eat her own excrements, and she was also made to eat um, what was on the baby's diaper. Now, Jenny was also bullied by many other neighborhood kids, uh, many kids at school. When she tried to bring up Sylvia's situation, nobody believed her, and she really had no way of contacting her parents. They were at a carnival somewhere, you know, in the 60s. She didn't know where, I guess, to mail anything to. She didn't have access to call them, anything like that. So Jenny was just trying to survive at this point. So they ran into their sister Diana at one point out in a park. And Diana was estranged from the family. She was older and I believe married at this point. She was forbidden to talk to her siblings by her parents. And they tried to tell her what was going on, but because of the estrangement, she sort of assumed that they were being punished for, you know, trying to reach out to their sister or something. She didn't really figure that it was as bad as they were saying, and they probably didn't tell her everything that was going on, just saying that we're staying with this woman, she's awful to us, we don't know what to do, but Diana really couldn't do anything about it either. Diana tried to visit them at Gertrude's home once, but she was told to leave the property. She was not allowed there. She was not allowed to see them because I guess Gertrude knew that they were estranged. So she didn't think too much of it. She just thought, okay, they're staying with this woman who knows what's going on with our family drama and I'm not allowed on this woman's property. So that is that. Now at one point, a neighbor made an anonymous report which prompted an in-home visit by a public health nurse. The nurse went in and asked questions, but she really, you know, she wasn't taken to see Sylvia or anything like that. She didn't know where Sylvia was. She wasn't witness to anything. So really after the only question she could ask, she was asked to leave and she was unable to interfere anymore because the neighbors didn't know, whoever reported this probably didn't know the extent of the injuries. They did their due diligence. They reported it, but without saying she's down in the basement, you know, go check that out, go check out her body for cigarette burns, stuff like that. The nurse only knew so much and you know said hey i'm here to just check on the welfare welfare of the kids so at first glance everything looks fine she asked the questions she knew to ask and basically gertrude fooled her into thinking everything was fine now i know that she said to the nurse at one point that the girls at least sylvia had been thrown out because she was too troublesome so I guess the nurse probably didn't pry any further than that. She said she didn't know where Sylvia was. I don't know if Jenny was involved in that story, you know, saying they both left, but she claimed to not even know where they were, said that it was them. They were just terrible kids. She couldn't figure out how to punish them. You know, that's where all the commotion was coming from. So it seemed like a likely story to the nurse. Now due to dehydration, not being fed, not given water, Jenny later speculated during the trial that during all these tortures and everything, Sylvia basically stopped crying 
tears through it. I'm sure she was still whimpering and still in terrible amount of pain. But this probably made the kids think that she was faking it or gave Gertrude an excuse to say she's faking it, she's not in pain, this and that. But Jenny actually speculated that she thinks it was because of dehydration. Her sister literally ran out of tears. On October 22nd, which we are now approaching the final days, Sylvia was forced by John to eat a bowl of soup with her fingers. Now, as soon as she was able to sort of figure it out and attempt to eat it, the bowl was taken away from her. So it was really just a tease, just for his entertainment. Gertrude eventually allowed her to sleep upstairs under the condition that Jenny did not wet herself upstairs. Again, she's incontinent. She doesn't really have any control over this. And she's so dehydrated that that night, Jenny gave Sylvia her one request, which was, please give me a glass of water. Like, she was so dehydrated. So she gave her a glass of water. Of course, she ended up wetting herself. Sylvia, at that point, forced her to stick. I don't know if this was the one time she did it or the second time she did it, but in, insert an empty Coca-Cola bottle into herself as punishment. And these are glass bottles. These are painful. I mean, this is not, this is just disgusting. And she forced her to do this in front of the other children so that she would be humiliated by it. After this happened, Sylvia was forced to strip naked. And at this point, Gertrude took a needle and heated it and started writing on Sylvia's abdomen. And there are photos of this from when the crime scene was found, from when Sylvia's body was found. It's very clear. It's not like tiny little burns or anything. With a hot needle she carved into Sylvia's stomach I'm a prostitute and proud of it. And she was unable to finish branding her herself, but she asked Richard Hobbs to finish it. Now, uh, Hobbs finished it while Jenny went with Gertrude to go grocery shopping. Like Gertrude act like, acted like this was totally normal. Come on, Jenny, let's go get some food while Richard Hobbs was forced to finish it. He finished it with the help of 10 year old Shirley and then they used an iron poker in attempt to burn the letter S in her chest, like the scarlet letter. And they sort of messed it up and it ended up looking like a three, apparently. But because of all the scarring on her, Gertrude was later able to taunt Sylvia and say that she would never get married because of all these scars on her chest. So she's ruining this girl's life if she were to even survive. Sylvia was taken back to the basement where Coy Hubbard tied her up and slammed her body against the wall six to seven times again for his own amusement that night she confessed to her sister jenny i'm going to die i can tell i mean at this point she has no muscle control over probably hardly anything she can hardly walk she hasn't eaten or drank in god knows how long so at this point her body can't even handle food i know at one point when she went upstairs gertrude attempted to give her some toast and she physically could not eat it because she had no moisture to swallow like dry toast with now the next day after she was carved up gertrude went downstairs with a pad and pen and dictated a letter to her intending to mislead any authorities and stuff because I think it, at this point Gertrude knew that Sylvia was going to die. So she forced Sylvia to write a letter framing an anonymous group of boys for abusing and mutilating her after she had sexual relations with these boys. Now Gertrude's plan was to then take Sylvia's body and dump it in the woods somewhere and leave her to die. The problem is Sylvia overheard this plan. On October 25th, Sylvia tried to escape and fled to the front door, but due to her extensive injuries, Gertrude caught her in time. She was thrown back into the basement, but not before being struck in the face several times with a curtain rod. Gertrude and Coy Hubbard then tied her and bludgeoned her until she was unconscious. Now, Sylvia managed to recover from this, but she was unable to speak intelligibly and move her limbs properly. Um, she tried to escape the basement and she couldn't even make it to the staircase before she collapsed. Well, that's what a terrible shape she was in from all these beatings and everything. Gertrude then stomped on her head with her feet and stood there just watching her for several moments. The next day, on October 26th, after multiple beatings, burnings, scalding baths, and more, 
Sylvia sadly died of a brain hemorrhage, shock, and malnutrition at the age of 16 years old. Now, when Stephanie, the second oldest, and Richard Hobbs realized that she was not breathing, Stephanie tried to perform mouth-to-mouth -mouth on Sylvia. She was shouting for her mother, shouting for someone to help, and Gertrude just kept telling her that Sylvia was faking it, that she wasn't really dead, she was faking it. When Gertrude finally realized that Sylvia was dead, she sent Hobbs to call the police from a nearby payphone. When they arrived, Gertrude was prepared with the letter saying, this is what I found, she ran away, you know, all this stuff, and apparently some boys did this to her. However, before Gertrude was able to give them the letter, Jenny made it outside, you know, like she was just going outside to greet the police officers and said to them, get me out of here and I will tell you everything. With Jenny's testimony and with all the evidence and with what had happened to Sylvia's body, um, they decided to arrest many people in this. They decided to um, hold Gertrude, her children, Hobbs, and Hubbard, all without bail pending their trials so they could figure out what the hell went down in this house. 